the film. You're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your face. Woo! Oh my god, look at this. Oh, it is so awesome. Hello, everybody. I love the new wave. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so today we've got something pretty fancy. It's a little display formatter, and as you can see on the LCD screens all over the place. If you're happy and you know it, clap your face is playing all over every LCD panel. Cool. Well, let's turn this crap off. Boom, boom, boom. So the code that we've got today is clap your face code. Why is something in there? Something should be in there. Let's go to the browser workshop. We're offline. Look for clap your face display format helper class. Double click it. Loads it in. Check the code. Remember really quick. Let's go back into the editing. We did that so we could get the, the editing you know, cursor to work. <laughs> so the first version that we have, let's go ahead and just run the code. Hey, why did that switch on me? Oh, timer block needs to be off. Timer. Turn this one off. Stop. Let's find the LCD panels. Let's switch these around really quick. There we go. So the first example code that's running in this is a really basic piece right there. It's been running a few times. You can cycle through. Mm -hmm. You can see we've got fancy little percent bars down here. Percent bars that are like 50% of the width of the screen. All that kind of good stuff. So let's do something really quick. Let's change the font size of the LCD panel to, let's do 0.8. And we're gonna go over here, rerun the program again. As you can see, it's reformatted everything. Just peachy keen. Let's go back to the LCD panel. We're gonna set that back to one. So now to the code. Check out this code here. So what we have going on here is the first example. So we instantiate the clap your face. Uh, let's look at the, the example with notes. That'll help me figure out what to say to you guys right now. So let's see. First thing we do is instantiate the object. Do it outside of the main function. The main function is right here. You want to do that so it doesn't reload all the time. And um, basically when you start your programming block, the first time you run it, it pulls all this data that's outside of the main. Then it just continues cycling through main. So all this stuff is going to be loaded into memory the first time. And we've got our display name LCD panel here. So what we have in the main code, in our main argument, main argument, main method, is our clap your face piece. Main bread and butter to get it started to find the display and all that kind of stuff is the set display method. So we're, we put in the when we did our object reference right here, when we instantiated it, we did it to CYF. So we call CYF, set display name, or set display, put in the display name that's up here. We push through grid terminal system so we can actually find the stuff in classes because classes don't play right in C sharp. It says something right here about it. Da, 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 da. So basically what we're doing is we're doing an if statement. If this value returns false, we're gonna send out an error and say that we can't find a display name. And that's gonna be popped out into your, what is it, detailed information. And that's what Echo does. Let's get back to that. The next thing that we do is we set up the configuration. So what this does is basically goes through and gets the font size of the LCD screen that you have listed in the code and all that kind of fancy stuff. So it's doing line heights, widths, you name it. And then we have a piece right here, which is just generating a generic screen, which is that if you're happy and you know it, clap your face on the back. And what it'll do is put it into string data to be displayed. Woohoo! We then use the format string, which ends up calling a word wrap and some scrolling magic stuff that we have. And it passes that through and it returns it straight back to that, that variable string data to be displayed. The next piece is we call the class with right display. And this is another method that's gonna be pushing the data out. 
So when we push the button over and over again, it recognizes how many times it's scrolled, and it'll start re-scrolling the cycle towards the bottom of the screen there. And it's back to the beginning right there. And it's a pretty smooth scroll. For the most part, everything works. It's not too bad. So, one of the main things to remember with your code is when you have the string part right here, example one with comments, the string to be displayed, you have to have a carriage return in there, otherwise the word wrap pukes on it. Maybe I'll fix that later, but for right now it's functional, it doesn't trick, and just remember to do a slash n. You can always do something like, you know, plus slash n on whatever string variable that you have in there. So, let's go ahead and close the comment on this one. We'll go to the second section, which is what everybody wants to have in their code. It's the progress bars. So we went ahead and just put another comment on that piece, so it's going to run this section of code here. We're going to be doing progress bars that are going to show, you know, what's that going to be, about 25%, 20% right there, 1 out of 5. And we're going to do one that's 50% uh, width, and then we're going to have a few more. Let's just hit button and run it. So we can see over here, we have a progress bar that expands the entire width of the, the screen. And then we've got another progress bar, which is running at 50%. Then we've got a progress bar with the trailing percentage. Then we've got another progress bar trailing percentage at 33% width. And then we've got some text on the top, percentage on the side, and then the progress bar down below. Programming block, edit it again go back to the code portion so we can see what we're doing and that was an example two so you can see right here all we're doing is calling the reference variable object thingy the CYF that we have up above right here and then we tell it to run the progress bar method inside of that this progress bar method because we ran our set to display configuration method if it knows what size your LCD screen is and makes the progress bars to those widths that we have set here. So one of the things when you're doing a, like a half width setting, you want to make sure you set it up as a float. This little F after the point five says, do me as a float, not a double. So make sure you have that in there. If you're getting a, a message saying that, you know, you can't convert a double to a float or something, that's why put a little F there. And then we can see We've got the, almost the exact same thing instead of progress bar method, it's doing progress bar trailing numbers. And that shows the trailing percentage right there. And then the one at the very bottom, which shows the progress bar at the, the entire progress bar at the bottom, shows the progress bar. And we're using some of our alignment pieces, the align left and right. So this is what's going to be in the left side, the percent to the right with the text progress bar below and then it's going to show the percentage and it kind of scrolls off the screen here oh, that's kind of annoying well if you copy and paste it, it it'll show the whole thing I didn't know that this editor didn't do the word wrap I always do things in another editor so I apologize for that um, but anyhow you can see that the 99% in the background there is percent to the right of the text PR dot 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 it automatically truncated this because it was too long to fit on the entire length of that one line. So let's go to the next examples. We'll have some more examples of how the formatting, truncating, and stuff work below, I think. So, bum bum bum, example three. Clear this one out. So now we can run this code here. What is this doing? Simple ignore display if not found. So the display name is, where do I change my display name? Let's go ahead and do a remember exit. If we run the code and it doesn't have a name that it recognizes, we'll see it comes up with a message, no block found with the name, where do I change my name? Where do I change the LCD name? And then we got a little notice that it made it to the end of the program, so it didn't crap out, right? So let's see, back to example three. We can see right here, it's doing a statement. Instead of doing a, a return out of the function, it's just doing a statement saying that, you know, we didn't find the display. So if you got code that you have and you want it to run regardless of the LCD is there or not, this is how you do it. You do an if, set display, if it returns false, which it's doing. Actually, that's not returning false, is it? 
Put a little exclamation mark there. It returned. Oh, it's not supposed to return false. <laughs> so it found the display true, and it sets that found display variable, which is right here. And then if it found the display, then it'll run all the crap for the the piece right there. So what we can do if we want to test it is put LCD panel. And now when we run it, no block found LCD panel. What? Boom, boom, boom. Capital P? Yay! And then you can see it scrolling in the background when we click over and over. That, that is so annoying listening to that. Okay. To the next example. Boop. Number four. Let's clear this out. So this is doing uh, search blocks with name versus uh, what is it? get block with name toggle. So as you can see right here, we've got or instantiation of the object and it's set to no passing of arguments. Since it's not passing an argument, it's going to default the search block with name instead. So if we do a remember and exit and run on this one, it's going to give us a, an error that it's found multiple matches for the search block with name. And we should run, you know, a search block of name, do an if statement for set exact name to true. So we could do a set exact name to true method in there, or we can just flip it to true. We'll have to fix up that message so it's a little bit cleaner. So let's do a true here. And let's see, the other part is this has a display on and off toggle. So let's go ahead and run this again. Make sure it's working. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and flip our timer block on. The actions are set up to, you know, the standard run the programming block, start the timer block. So let's start that. As it's scrolling in the background, you can see everything going there. And we're gonna take our programming block. We're gonna run it with an argument display on. And we're gonna run it again with the dis the argument display off. So now if we hit the display off button, let's rename this these buttons really quick so I don't forget. Display on. Display off. So now we go display off. Boom! It disappeared. Do display on. Whoa! It's back. Wow! So one of the reasons why this feature is super important is if we've got an antenna and we turn it on, there's our antenna on the back, we go back into the programming block, we do an edit. Now if we notice in the programming block, it says it's in standby mode because the display's turned off. Cool. Okay. So let's switch back down to section four. And we're gonna change this from LCD to antenna. Check that code, remember an exit. So since we remembered an exit, they forgot that the display was off, right? But we can see that the, the code's playing on our, our antenna now. Woo! One of the big problems with this is that when we try to look for an antenna, it's not there. So if we scroll through this, we'll see this crap just scrolling by. This looks like the right block. If you don't turn the display off, it's going to trash the name antenna. So if you recompile the code or anything, you want to make sure you got that off. So you come over here, turn that off. Now if we go back into our control panel section, our terminal, and we look for antenna, it's back to normal. And then we can flip it on when we want to. So this is a good way to just like scroll messages to all the players on the server or something if you've got an antenna that's rolling. It's probably going to be super annoying if you do that though. So. I don't know, you might not want that much data to be scrolled. So, you know, bum, bum, bum. Let's go ahead and turn the antenna back off. Let's go back into the programming block. And that was example four. Bum, bum. So let's go ahead and comment out example four again. It's got little blocks down here, you know, so we can just do the one block at the top or bottom. It makes it a little bit easier. So this is example five. What is example five? Basic alignment. So the basic alignment, we've got two settings for it. We've got the align center, 
or two methods of the align center method and the align left and right. So with the align center, it's going to find whatever text you have and it's going to add spaces to the front of it so it'll be in the center text. With the align left right, it's going to find the the left the string for the left, the string for the right. It's going to find out how many spaces need to be in between them so it'll just fill that up. Let's go ahead and remember and exit. It's automatically running on the timer block. So we're going to have to click run. We go up to the screen and we do the edit public text and we can see right here all these spaces that were added to why doesn't it go all the way and then we got a blank space and then you can see all these spaces in between so it automatically does that for you and it's not too bad it does it pretty quick so i think it works pretty well so hopefully you guys will use this in some of your own code if you wanted those super fancy percent bars and everything else the progress bars and something that scrolls for you um this is super useful so hey what's going on here oh i need to turn the display back on bam, bam, bam. There. <laughs> now we're back to the super scrolling everywhere all right well i hope you guys enjoyed this it's been kind of a interesting run trying to get this to go why is it flickering between the two? Oh, because both programs are running, huh? Did I not turn the timer block off? <laughs> Stop there. There we go. Now it's back to normal. So I hope you guys enjoyed. It's been a lot of work to get this thing going and to make it so it's functional for everything. So if you use it in your code, post a comment. Let me know. That kind of stuff is super awesome. We will see you guys next time.